I have had an amazing last decade working with literally the world's leading professors from China to America, Harvard, Washington, California, all, and what's fascinating, all experts in one thing. And I'll give you an example of this. Like in America, top professor on omega-3, Professor William Harris. And he's done so many studies that show basically the more omega-3 you have, the better is your memory, the mm -hmm. larger is your brain. It's literally as simple as that. Yep. And, um, but the thing is, for omega-3 to be bound into your brain, your brain is 60% fat, yep. all, everything we're hearing and speaking right now is going through this omega-3 network. Yep. For it to actually be there, um, you need B vitamins. Yep. And B vitamins, I'm sure we'll talk about, is to do with something called homocysteine. So anyway, this brilliant fellow developed a test which measures a pinprick blood test, your red blood cell mm -hmm. membrane level of omega-3, yep. DHA, EPA. And I said, do you ever find, Bill, that someone has the same intake from fish or supplements but a different omega-3 index score? And he says, yeah. And I said, have you ever thought it might be um, because some don't have enough B vitamins and therefore can't mm -hmm. bind it in there? He said, Totally logical. Never thought of it. Because the other professor at Oxford yep. has spent his his career doing the most extraordinary work on B vitamins yep. you know, and homocysteine. So the point is, and you know our lovely friend, Professor Robert Lustig, mm -hmm. you know, he's gone a mile deep into sugar. Yep. So you know, they've all gone a mile deep into their area of speciality. And what I've had the honor to do is they're like the masters. I'm like the jack of all trades. Um, is to learn. You're not jack of all trades. You're a very good mouthpiece because well, what a lot of these professors do, they are absolutely, there's a few exceptions. Yeah. Uh, but most of them can't explain it in plain English. Exactly. And, 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 and that's what, in all your books, yeah. it's the references to science, to data, to, to, to researchers yeah. is on virtually every single page in your book, which I have read, read covered together, by the way, uh, which mm -hmm. I think is brilliant. Uh, therefore, I've got millions of questions, hence you're also <laughs> here. Um, um, is you put it in plain English, so we all understand yeah. it. And when you put the pieces together, that's the magic of this book. And it's exactly what we're doing at the charity. When you put the pieces together, mm -hmm. I mean, the outrageous thing, I don't know how it was for you, but when you read for the book, you learn that if you eat, you know, less sugar and more fiber and so on, you halve your risk. And if you have omega-3, you halve your risk. And if you have yep. the beavers, you halve your risk. And before long, you think, God, I could reduce my, I could like eliminate my risk many times over. Yep. And that's the point, mm -hmm. because all of these studies have looked at one thing and its effect, and no one has looked at all of the things. And I yep. can say right now, it is my personal belief, based on the science, that 99% of people can completely eliminate their chances of developing Alzheimer's if they make some relatively simple diet and lifestyle choices, probably starting from their 50s. Um, and, you know, what actually happens then, we've now got the data, no one's seen this, is that when you do, to be diet, I mean, I'll give you an example. Like one guy, right, his wife keeps finding him in different rooms at night because he cannot find the loo in his own house. Mm -hmm. Anyway, obviously they go to the doctor, they're referred to a memory clinic who run a cognitive function test, which is how you diagnose dementia and a blood scan to diagnose Alzheimer's. He's diagnosed with mixed dementia, which is Alzheimer's and vascular. Right. She says, what do we do? And they say, nothing. Six months later, they're trying to enroll him in some d terrible drug trial. They find our charity, foodwiththebrain.org. They do the cognitive function test, which is a digital and free version of what you can do. Um, they do the questionnaire. They make all the changes. And uh, this was so from December to now. Uh, now he's he's remeasured. His cognitive function has improved wow, dramatically. Fantastic. He's planted his whole spring garden. He's back on the computer. Gorgeous. And now you know I don't want to over exaggerate that case because it was too late in the day. We want to get in there earlier. Yep. But that you know you you really can do so much. Mm -hmm. um, that is the point. Now having tested four hundred thousand people on this, this is on of, your yeah. site. And the test is a bit like a test for diabetes in the sense that it was developed to be able to diagnose who's got dementia or pre-dementia, which is called mild cognitive impairment. 
So if you let's call pre dementia orange or amber yep. and dementia red. So what happens in the green? Nobody knows, but we do. And what I'll tell you is every year from the age of 18, cognitive function is declining. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary. So you can literally draw a line. Yep. So I'm telling you that a 35-year-old is worse than a 30-year-old who's worse than a 25-year-old who's worse than a 20-year-old. And next one of our projects is to look at 5 to 17-year-olds. But the point here is, if you imagine this line that's falling, and most people, when they sort of hit 85, are going into the mild cognitive impairment phase, and then, you know, when they're 90 or so, whatever. So we end up with one in six with Alzheimer's. Now, what if you could... Sh Let's not even talk yet about flattening the line, which I think is possible. Yep. But if you just could move it up. Yep. So what's happened is on our questionnaire, where basically you, if you're doing everything wrong, you get a dementia risk index of 100%. And if you're doing everything right, you get a dementia risk index of 0%. And we've split people into the quarter lowest, which is good, which is green, and the quarter highest, which is red, which is bad. Mm -hmm. Now, those people in the green already doing the right kind of things, their cognitive function also declines in, in relation to the ages of people we have. Mm -hmm. But their line is so much higher, higher up. that if you plot it, yeah. they will get Alzheimer's when they're about 290. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's what I want it. Exactly. <laughs> so, look, a few things. Straight away, for those that are watching that don't know this, there will be lots of people watching this going, well, I thought... Alzheimer's, you either just got it or you didn't. You're talking about prevention. We're going to pick up on this in some depth. Yeah. Next thing I want to say is that in the last six months researching the book and having all these professors and doctors talking to me and interviewing some haven't you know some we've put out already, some we haven't on on podcast. That that it's fantastic. There seems to be a consensus around the world now that virtually not just Alzheimer's, but virtually every condition around the brain from bipolar to epilepsy to ADHD to anxiety to depression stop thinking about it as a brain condition start thinking about it as a metabolic condition and at least if even if you don't completely go it's metabolic driven mm -hmm. at least consider that in the diagnosis and the prevention uh, and that's fantastic because what you've just said get your vitamin b sorted get your yeah. homocysteine level sorted uh, from your vitamin b's Omega threes, DHA, all that sort of stuff for the brain, uh, being prevention. Cut out the um, sugar and cut out the sugar. Cut out the sugar. Up your well, fiber. I'll tell you, funny Steve, on this tour I've been doing in Ireland. Yeah. Um, a couple of places were quite upset because um, one of my chapters is well, it was going to be building young brains and preventing neurodivergence. That's all you can you can say that. And some of the posters people said, oh, you can't say that. So. What what's going on here is we are we've we're normalizing like you know it's happened with obesity to some extent but we're normalizing Alzheimer's like it's just what happens when you get older and now we've pulled sort of ADHD autism you know and various other things all into a bundle we call it neurodivergence mm -hmm. we are neurodiverse yeah everyone is different it's to be honored and yep. enjoyed um, but. Most, not all, with neurodivergence have a condition, a health condition, which is unpleasant. And they get stressed and they get anxious and they can't interact socially and they can't concentrate and they can't sit still and they have gut problems and they have all sorts of problems. And we're sort of normalizing this like yep. it's something, despite the fact that it's gone up sixfold in, you know, probably 10, mm -hmm. maybe 20 years. Yep. Um, so in other words, not genes, but yep. it's gone up. The genes haven't changed. Yep. So we're normal. It's like cancer, isn't it? People go, oh, it's genetic. It's just normal. Sorry, how can it be genetic if 100 years ago it was one in 20 yeah. and now it's one in two? Yeah. Come on, genetics don't change exactly. that quick. So I wrote a piece recently called Neurodivergent or Neurodeficient mm -hmm. because, you know, I took the very symptoms actually reported by America's um, CDC, Center of Disease Control. Not everyone likes them. And they've been very heavily pushing vaccines and they've got a tremendous amount of patents on vaccines oh, as well. In a bit, remind me, I want to talk about vaccines. Yeah, I know, it would be good. Um, but I just took their list of symptoms and then put beside it the studies. I mean, I'll give you, you know, an outrageous example here. If a mother is deficient in vitamin A, mm -hmm. um, the child can be born 
And sometimes this is permanent with visual problems that mean that they have to look out of the sides of their eyes to get the most visual information. So some autistic children will not look you in the eye um, because they've actually got a visual um, problem and they kind of pick up information in the periphery. Now, the good news is for some of these kids, when we give them vitamin A, retinol, um, and by the way, omega-3 DHA, those are really what the eye is made out of, um, cod liver oil mm -hmm. has both, they start looking you in the eye. Wow. And some of them, they've said to me, like, now I can see my feet and my hands or my hands and my arms at the same mm -hmm. time. Wow. So what we're talking about here is a maternal deficiency mm -hmm. that affects fetal development mm -hmm. that results in a problem which in some cases can be improved. Unfortunately, in some cases, you know, is, is a disability. We should not be normalizing this. Yes. We should be approaching it, dealing with it, educating young women and mothers. And like you say, it's extraordinary how the same factors pop up with all these mental health problems. <laughs> so, you know, behind me, you kind of see this image of eight factors. Yep. You know, we're talking about sugar, glycemic load, antioxidants, B vitamins, brain fats, healthy gut, active mind, active body, sleep and calm, which is stress and sleep. And actually, that's what's driving everything. So yeah. the wonderful side effect, if you read Upgrade Your Brain, for the purpose of dementia-proofing your diet and lifestyle, you've, you've diabetes-proofed your diet and lifestyle. You've heart disease-proofed yeah, your diet yeah, and lifestyle. Yeah. You know, you've cancer-proofed your diet and lifestyle. Yeah.